Hi, uh, this is a tutorial for uh, Nuke or NukeX. Um, it's for a, um, a, a visual effect sequence where we do a prop removal using Rotus, Rotoshape. So, um, so, so prop removal or wire removal is, um, is where we um, take out something that um, is used to move an object or, or somebody. So in this case we have a, um, a um, knife sharpener which is used to um, manipulate and, and move this gun this Colt 45 replica. So um, here you see uh, the footage um, where the, uh, my hand comes in and um, lifts the gun and the final, the final sequence will be a sort of um, a spooky poltergeist sort of effect where the gun will just um, float up off the book and out of shot on its own. So a sort of um, invisible man kind of effect. Um, so, um, to make this shot work, what we need to do is remove my hand, obviously, and the, um, the knife sharpener which holds the gun. So, um, that's the, the length of the sequence. It's playing back quite slowly so we can see everything there. And at the end of the shot, we have a clean plate there. You'll notice the clean plate is much darker. But I didn't have great control over the lighting in this shot. Um, using natural daylight. So, um, so yeah, what we need to do is um, is remove this um, this object in my hand by making a clean plate, which we then uh, merge through. Um, a rotor shape will will follow the, the the motion of my hand and the and the knife the knife sharpener right up to the edge of the gun, and um, it will it will just merge through a clean background. Um, so it appears as if there's um, as if the gun is, is is floating on its own accord. We're just looking, you can see there's a, the lighting change will cause a bit of a problem, so that's something we need to, to solve. You can see from between the start of the sequence it's brighter, the end of the sequence is darker. And um, our clean plate will probably be taken from the end because we do have it all clean there, so we need to, we need to take a shot, take um, a still of this, of this background um, with nothing on it. We need, to get, we need to get that through and um, freeze it up. Um, so my first uh, task though is to checking the, the, the resolution of the footage, which you can see in the bottom right corner of the, um, of the screen there. Um, we need to just press S for settings and get the project settings and just um, change the settings to to the same resolution as HD 720 in this case. Once that's done we've um, every, anything we make will come in the same resolution. So then we'll um, we'll go to tab and we'll bring in a frame hold. A frame hold will just um, take a, a frame from the sequence that we're looking at and it will just um, freeze it for the duration which is um, a 600 frame duration of the whole, of the whole shot. So um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the, the number of the, the frame at the end of the sequence, and we just put that in here at the top, and um, that will be our um, that will be that will freeze that. That'll be our clean plate background. Okay, so we just move that down. So we put a viewer on that so we can see that and um, so just with, with a viewer with um, two inputs we put in a second viewer so just press two on the frame hold and and use viewer one to view um, the read node and then um, at the top there we can um, switch to wipe we can wipe between the two shots and we can really analyze the difference in the grade between the, um, the clean plate and the footage at the beginning of the sequence I'm just looking at the frames at the beginning of the sequence 
at the moment, scrubbing back and forwards, and um, we just compare the, the two the two grades. So what we need to do is, is to match that grade in the clean plate. So I just get my um, the clean plate side underneath the frame hold and press G, and we get a grade node up. And we can zoom in there to, to the sort of um, the edge between the, um, the two, between the, the, the front of the sequence and the clean plate. And um, going to the grade, we can start, start adjusting the levels to try and um, match match the uh, the dark side, the dark grade, um, clean plate background. Uh, we'll try and match it as close as possible to look like the, um, the the start of the sequence. So it's just taking a bit of lift or gain, maybe the gamma up a little bit. Just just tweak those ones which um, which brighten it until you get, by eye, you get a good match. This looks pretty, pretty solid. <clears throat> we do have another another slight problem, is the pages have moved slightly, the gun's weighing them down. You can see that as we lift up. And at the beginning of the sequence when the gun is flat. So we go forwards to sort of where the where the grade starts to change in the sequence, so halfway through the sequence, it starts to get darker, and we keyframe the grade node attributes that we've changed. So at this point, we want to keep it bright up to that point, and then you see, we're just scrubbing through the sequence, we see as the moving footage gets darker, we need to also make our grade get darker. So we move to the sort of point where it's got quite dark, and then we We'll tweak the levels down to match again, so that the, um, the clean plate gets darker at the same rate as the um, as the moving footage, and that's a good match by eye to me. Pretty much, because we put keys into these already, it's going to auto key them when we change them. Go forwards a bit to the darkest point, and we tweak them again for a third key. You know the key's been made when it goes to the bright blue in the number boxes of the grade. So just scrolling through just to check that after that point, everything is the same darkness. We're turning off the white now, I think. So we got that grade working now, we just check it. We're just looking at the clean plate and how it changes at the moment. Now we switched looking at the, the main footage. So the next thing to do will be to um, to make a rotor shape, which will um, which will merge through a patch um, through to that clean plate. So um, we need to make a roto. So we press tab and enter roto. We need something to copy that um, the alpha channel that we're making that roto into the um, into the clean plate. We're going to zoom in to where um, we, we need to. Our roto needs to be quite accurate at this point. Um, this is where the the, um, the handle goes into the gun. And very similar metallic colours, so we need to make sure we can see the difference between the two. There's a slightly rounded piece to, to the handle of the gun at the back there, the metal. And we need to. We're starting our spline there. We're going to make it quite accurate there. And then we go round the hand with some, with just a few points. You don't need too many. Just and smooth them off. 
remember the more points we make in this rotor shape, the more we have to manipulate when we do in keyframe. So if we can if we can keep it to the, the bare minimum needed, then um, it'll be less work to do when it comes to moving all the points. So we've made this shape. You can see where it joins the gun on the left. It's, it's quite accurately close to the edges. And, um, but the rest of the shape is just a sort of rough shape around the hand and the um, knife sharpener that holds it. Okay, for some reason my um, my copy isn't copying the alpha channel into the into the um, that, the branch of the tree. So I'm just going to um, I think about that um, second. I think I probably just need to make a new one. Solves things, making another copy. Okay, yes, that's worked. So, I don't know what happened in the last one. It works now, just like so inexplicably, it's not working. It's worth just, um, yeah, replacing the and trying again. So with the pre-bolt on there, we can sort of see our patch that we've made for what it is. So we, this is the only piece of the clean plate that we're going to actually use. We just need what, just taking what we actually need. Um, we need to now go to the feathering. So in the in the roto, this is in the roto spline. We go to the um, the points and select feather points. We can just pull out feather points. Everywhere around the spline, except except where it meets the gun itself, which needs to stay sharp. So this is just going to smooth the transition to the clean plate off around the edges, but not here. On these points that go around the gun handle, they need to stay sharp as anything. They can see when we look at the pre-mold. The, the effects of the feathering, where it, it's sort of um, our patch has got soft edges to it now, which may help if, if the complete isn't exactly 100% matching the, the background. So that's um, it's a safe thing to do. So now we can, um, with a merge, we can um, we can plug our patch into the um, on top of the footage that we have. And I think I put the inputs in the wrong way round as usual. Um, yeah, switch them around. There we go. So now we can see our patch has actually removed my hand and the, the prop completely, um, just for this one frame, but um, it's gone. It's the result we want. You notice I started making the rotor spline some, somewhere in the middle of the sequence. Um, it does need to change because towards the beginning of the sequence, the gun is lying on its side and it's a little bit different. So that's going to cause a few difficulties possibly. Uh, we'll have to be clever with the rotor spline as we as as it changes shape. But yeah, turning it on and off, we can sort of see it's neatly removed that. We can see the paper moving slightly. If you notice that, because the page. Turn it on and off. The um the paper is at a slightly higher level, so we have to we have to take that into consideration as well. Zoom in so you can see that closer. See the corner of the paper going up and down as I, as I toggle between them. So I'm going to go to select all of the points in the roto shape and I'm going to move some of these points so that we're actually going to be seeing the paper from the from the moving footage and not the paper in the clean plate and that will resolve that problem. So just moving those splines up there that means we've got all the paper in, but now it clips the thumb ever so slightly, so I might have to do a tiny bit of a particular thumb solution. I'm going to change the, um, the frame increments here to 20, so we start keyframing. This, this little box down here lets you um, click on and move forward to however many frames you, you, you set it to. Which is 
quite nice for a regular keyframe so I'll just move it forward 20 and I select the whole shape we're in the select all function of the rotor spine right down to the box over everything and then move the entire shape up um, I'm looking at the, the point where it meets the gun most closely and then I'm going to start tweaking the individual points on that on that keyframe uh, paying special attention here to keep the separation between the the knife sharpener where it joins the gun and making sure that um, those those points are very accurate now, these ones they just need to be pulled so that my hand nothing from my hand is um, outside of the inner line Checking all around. So when we do these ones where we go close to the gun, we need to zoom in, make sure that we're looking, we're cutting what we want to cut out. So we jump forward the next twenty. We put in our third keyframe now. everything again move it all up and then zoom back in where it meets the gun so here we're um, we could use an extra point if the um, another straight edge has appeared which we don't have enough points for Now we can we can add points to a roto shape during its um, during its life cycle. Um, it's better to put them in earlier rather than later. But here, when you zoom back in, you can clearly see we had one point where we could use an extra one. So we'll move the the one point we have got and the other ones nearby to where they should be. Zoom in on where we need to add something. So we go to add point. We can just add a point where we need it. Now it's sort of it's done an average of between the point on its left, which has no feathering, and the one on its right, which has some feathering. We're gonna just um, we'll keep it with a slight feather, but we we'll just pull pull that feather right in close so that it's um, quite a sharp point, and then just move it up so that we have a straight edge there. So that's adding a, a point to our roto shape in the sequence. And there's some more complicated sequences. Things may change quite a lot, and you need. To a whole load of extra points later on in the sequence that you may not have um, made at the beginning. You just say when you do add them, you need to check frame, previous frames and see how it's changed things. Sometimes it can change the shape of everything. Um, It might be in some cases where things do change a lot to find the most complex sort of shape frame and start there with the most points that you're ever going to need. But um, as it was early on in the sequence, adding that one point hasn't really affected much. So we've got this extra point now, and we can carry on working through the um, rotor shape, jumping 20 frames at a time. Zooming in near the gun, and then pulling out the other points around the hand. Okay. 
here 20 again select just the the points the sharp points and move them as a group and move them individually missed a bit there on the handle Move it up. Just remember to keep these away from the gun. We want to see all of the gun. We don't want it to be, we don't want it to be cropped with a little dent anywhere along its edge. You have to also double check that the, we're taking the hand and the and the prop out in the wider uh, view as well. made a dent in there where we um, move the other points up so we've got to keep that up. Uh, we'll be careful not to not to fade out the um, the hammer of the gun either at the top there. And just following up to get the hand in the other parts. Okay so I'm going to speed up the rest of the uh, roto process now because it's um, I think you get the idea of that. So um, going to speed this up and then um, we'll be on to the next part. Just following the same process, um, we, we go around all the shapes, just carefully where it meets the gun. Um, you have to sort of um, there's a sort of um, a black line, which I think is part of the gun. There's so its shadow where it shows its depth. So if we keep that even right the way through. The angle changes slightly, and then quite a few parts of the elements go out of shot so you just need to make sure the bits that are in shot sort of guess where the hand's gone up, up above. Take you through to the end of the sequence. And then I'm going back through to some of the in-between frames and just checking it will come it will come off because we jumped we went ahead every 20 frames so some quite um, rapid movements sometimes. So just going around wherever the mask either goes into the gun or goes too far away from it, we need to just get the in-between frames and uh, move them down. Uh, we're now moving um, backwards to the first frame from the beginning which uh, started sort of in the middle of the sequence or one third of the way through. So now we're going to the back to the start sequence where the, the gun lies on its side and um, points have to sort of uh, change a little bit here as the as the uh, the prop, the knife sharpener um, goes behind the handle. Just keeping a clean, smooth curve around that handle. Just concentrating mainly on the bit where the knife sharpener goes behind it. And there it is. Just viewing the um, the final mesh and just checking um, everything's great. Okay, so had to uh, bend the rotor up there where the paper um, was distorted, just so that it, um, it hides that. Okay, then you're just going back forwards through the in-between frames, making sure everything is staying at the correct distance, showing that black line and stays the same width. Doesn't crop any part of the um, the gun's hammer. Okay, 
I can check in the frames again. I can see here the thumb has stuck out of the bottom of the mask. So I'm just going to move some points. Just trying to avoid adding new points when we don't need to. There's only three or four points around the hand, but I think we could manipulate them. Enough to, um, to hide everything. So just going back and um, playing forwards, we can keep checking that um, everything is contained where it should be. We're looking at the final result and then doing a render of it. I think I saw something. Yeah, just um, just by the. the the handle of the gun uh, finger has appeared through the mask down there, or the tip of my thumb. So, um, just gonna go to the keyframes that are already existing and edit them. Don't need to add new ones necessarily, could just use the function on the bottom line to jump from keyframes to keyframe. And um, if the one is slightly faulty, we could just edit it. Right, without having to make new ones. So keep playing through to just check the masks working okay. The clean plates show you through okay. Pretty good. Didn't play the entire sequence and render the very beginning. Um, it's not playing in real time, but um, I can, it's quite good. It plays through fairly slowly, so we can actually see clearly. So the um, next part of the sequence will be to um, is to just uh, finish off the um, the footage with some a grade and a and a look that, that suits it. Maybe um, an old an old film effect, maybe something simple. I put a, a grade mode on the, on the finished copy at the end. It's G for grade. I'm also going to put in um, a saturation node, just to desaturate the picture to almost black and white before we alter, before we alter the colours too much. Just going into the grade and just um, you press this the small um, number four on the right hand side um, of each of, of one of the um, functions there by the color wheels. You can you can edit individual color channels. So I'm just taking color channels up and down to get that sort of sepia tone effect. slightly yellowed old film feel maybe I can see something happening already in the, the, the right hand corner of the paper where the mask was the, um, the footage from the back plate has been uh, put over the other footage there, and it's it's multiplied the white level to a sort of um, higher than uh, 
a higher than, than visible white level. So when I do the grading, it's, um, it's sort of leaving leaving that bit looking a bit brighter than the rest of the bright parts. No, we can fix that in a minute with a clamp. So this node I've just added is a camera shake. Tell it up the camera shake in it basically will just um, shake the camera around, move the whole picture um, randomly, a few pixels in it, random directions. Um, it scales up the picture slightly too, so you never get um, you never get never see the edges. And also bring up a um, a grain node that we can give a sort of strong film grain into the entire picture. Uh, before the, the film grain has just um, affected the area with the with the patch, but now if you put a shuffle in to just um, remove the alpha channel. Oh, sorry, to make it solid, you just um, go to the shuffle and uh, press the, the white box to make a solid alpha. Then um, our grain affects the whole picture. And you can see it in there now. So we've still got this, um, this over bright area where the, the two images have combined to make a sort of whiter than white effect which um, is spoiling our grade a bit it should be even grey but all the white bits of that book should be the same yellowy colour that they are on the rest of the page so let's fix that we need to put a, a clamp in somewhere in the tree to sort of um, stop that level from multiplying We'll just bring up a clamp node and we'll, uh, we'll try to figure out where it needs to go to make this work. That's a bit better but it's not quite there yet. We'll just leave that clamp for a minute and I'll just go to um, and the rest of the grading for now. Um, so I'm just going to um, label my grade node there uh, sepia so that we know that that grade is what does, is does the color correction. And I'm going to add another a new grade node directly below it. This one will be to, um, to darken the corners of the picture. So um, add in a grade node there label that into uh, I'll just call it fade so I know that's what that one does and this one so I'm just gonna sort of take some more keys and uh, darken down the whole picture for now I'm dragging down some of the some of the levels to a darker darker hue it's getting quite black because they're just going to be faded in do that, I use a, a roto node that brings in and plug that into the mask input that, of that grade node and go to um, the, the, the rectangle, the cusp of the rectangle node, I'll just make a rectangle with soft corners, hopefully. Okay, so it doesn't, so I have to edit the points. Uh, In there for control for the cusps, so it doesn't seem to be one. Um, so, what I need to do instead is just uh, maybe um, take the individual points and soften them that way. Go to the point editor. Has, um, Cusp points editor. Yeah. 
Just on them, do not do anything. I'll just maybe I'll just smooth the points instead. Okay, so selecting a point and hitting smooth point causes uh, the handles to open up. So we can, um, we can edit this shape that way. I do all the points that way. I just soften the corners. And the moment is the wrong way round as well. So I need to reverse it. And it's making the centre of the picture darker. We want the corners, the corners to go dark. Just tweak the shape a little bit first. Outright, and then I can reverse that mask and hit the invert button. So that's the right way around, it just needs to be softened now. So we go to the, the front panel, and the attribute editor, and there's uh, the feather which we can manually dial in up to uh, 200 or something quite strong. Take the overall shape and pull it inside a bit further. So we have a, a sort of spotlighting effect in the center. Give it that old, old film exposure look. And I just reduced the mix so, so slightly. Just turning some nodes off. The screen gets cluttered with control nodes and splines and things. Let's clear it all off so we can see it. We've got our source of grading more or less done and um, Camera shape was good. Like it's rattling for an old projector. I still have this problem with this area here. Uh, I put it put in the clamp node, but it only yeah, reduced it slightly. It didn't get rid of it completely. Possibly because it's after after the grade and it should be before. So let's try moving this clamp somewhere else. Put it in for all the grades. Oh, that's it, that's perfect. What we need to do. So yes, the it looked um, it looked like the same white as the other pieces of paper, but it's actually like double white. So it definitely be clamped before we did any grading. And after that grading affects everything equal. So we clamped to, to visible white level rather than super white. Put in a right node, ready to render this off. Just give it a name. Render a quick time in this case. Check the frame range, check it's going to the right place, and set up a render. And um, here's the render. Just cut that out. The rendering process is a bit slow and boring, so here's our final render. Where, um, yeah, it's me. ghostly. Old Western movie. Scary floating pistol. <laughs> <laughs>